Okay, welcome back to my studio here in Wailusing. I'm about to uh, resume this figure painting that's behind me that we've done, I think, four other segments. This is the fifth and final segment. It's just going to be a short video where I'm going to complete the uh, final stage, which is uh, working on the uh, lightest lights. As I explained in one of the earlier videos, my uh, process here is going from the darkest darks and working up the value scale. So it's a nice uh, uh, progression that adds a sense of structure and uh, a discipline if you haven't, uh, if you're a painter and haven't tried this method, you might give it a try. Or the other, uh, the reverse is going from the lightest lights, which I sometimes do. Um, <clears throat> since the last time that I painted on, I've uh, done several layers, uh, several sittings at this painting, and there's been several layers of varnish also put on it to even the uh, gloss uh, on certain areas of the, of the painting. Uh, you can, uh, uh, when you paint on top of it, it uh, for example, on the legs here, I've done that just today, and it will need a, a layer of varnish on it to even the tone, because when you paint uh, dark areas, it, it, uh, the, the paint dries matte, so it looks lighter and, until the final varnishes, or subsequent varnishes are put on it. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't look quite right. Uh, I wanted to show you the study, though, if you would look over here to the uh, study just to show you uh, some of the differences uh, that I've made here. This has, as I pointed out before, it has a triangular format here, and uh, the, the uh, palette is different. It's a decidedly cool palette. And um, the reason for doing studies is to work out uh, a concept, and you can come back up here now if you would, to work out the concept and um, look at the uh, painting and uh, to, to learn from it. Uh, for example, Seurat and um, Cezanne were two painters that were known for doing many studies. Uh, the painting in Chicago of uh, the island of Le Grand Jatte, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with. He did uh, many studies, little small oils, and uh, drawings, many drawings. And Cezanne painted Mount St. Victoire hundreds of times. So the basic point that I'm making is that uh, doing two studies is hardly uh, excessive, and uh, 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 it helps you to become more familiar with the subject. Okay, um, <clears throat> once again here I've uh, um, working up the value scale and uh, you can come in now and uh, get a close-up uh, look at the uh, painting here because um, uh, there are several different types of uh, light on this uh, oil painting and uh, one of them is the direct sunlight and I've already done one layer on, on them today but I'm going to build up even more with uh, more impasto. But there's the cool light on the arm here, there's the reflected light on her chest, and then there's a cool light coming in from the, uh, from the uh, other window there too. So there's several sources of light which add, adds interest and uh, complexity to the uh, painting. Okay, so um, I have um, several filbert brushes, and this is one of them here. It's a long uh, bristled uh, filbert. And I have it loaded with, uh, if you go down to the uh, palette here once, uh, this is, um, I'm sorry, Naples yellow with white. And uh, so I'm going to be using that here. Um, and uh, keeping the light direction in mind is one of the key things. So I'm building up uh, the, the lights here, but the light is coming from this direction, so I want to keep that in mind here. I, I know it may not be registering on the video, it may not get the uh, subtleties of these uh, uh, variations of uh, value, but I'm building up the highlights on certain areas. Uh, maybe if you go down here to this other knee. And another thing I wanted to point out is that I'm using uh, short choppy strokes, and the strokes are going with the form here. And right here you can see it's called a serrated edge or a vibrating edge. and. Um, Rather than modeling it like a uh, like an airbrush where everything's smooth, my approach is to use a lot of small brush strokes. Um, another thing about this reflected light right here in this part of the uh, leg, it's reflecting back from the knee here. And then there's a little bit of light here, and it's also causing this nice subtle little reflected light up into her shin bone. Okay, if you go up to her face now, <coughs> I'm going to use my mall stick here. And as I've said in earlier videos, uh, one of the things I do is paint while I draw and draw while I paint. I'm going to just switch to a smaller filbert here. And I see something that I want to correct. So I'm going to 
slightly raise her um, eyebrow hair. So this is part of the idea of, uh, of drawing while painting and painting while drawing. And, and the idea is that it's not so much like a, uh, uh, a coloring book or something that you just fill in. You're still developing form while you paint and uh, it makes it much more enjoyable too. Um, a, this uh, interesting thing here, I'm not sure if it registers, but right on this part of the bridge of her nose, uh, it gets more intense with a, a cadmium color and other painters like um, Jacques-Louis David would go towards a neutral uh, gray there, but I'm going towards a real uh, a warm red, a cadmium red, and um, I'm softening this edge here, but uh, also thinking of how the, these angles and slants go is another thing to keep in, in mind here too. And the, uh, s the light from the window is kind of catching on the zygomatic arch here. And uh, where else? Uh, right here in this part of her uh, chin. Okay, I have a um, also a um, another brush here that I'm going. Oops, <laughs> I'm going into the uh, shadow areas with a a real warm kind of uh, ochre color and. Um, I'm softening the edges and making them rounder as I go around. And uh, there's also a reflected light right here on this part of her nose. And I'm softening that right there now. Um, one other thing that I'll point out that's different in this painting than is from the uh, study is that I push the darks even darker in the face and, um, and throughout the whole painting. Um, and it gives it a little more uh, impact, I think. Okay, so right here, this is the other um, cheekbone, zygomatic arch, and I'm uh, just accentuating that. And this is another thing that I, I just changed and softened was slightly, and I'm doing this again with short, choppy brush strokes and trying to make it soft there. Okay, and just to point out a couple other uh, different types of light right here in the forehead, there's this cool light, and um, and then you, I'm not sure if it's registering, but once again I'm using these, uh, this vibrating edge here to soften this edge here, and the same over here, and um, I need to get a little bit of warmer color here, I'm going to add a a highlight in, so I'm just adding a little bit of uh, yellow ochre into this highlight to do this um, part of her hair right here. It, didn't, it uh, doesn't want to be quite as uh, as uh, light. Uh, slightly warmer. I need to get a little more white on the uh, brush here. To get it lightened just a little bit more than than I did. Okay, we'll go back up here. There, and then these uh, speaks of hair here that are catching a little bit of uh, light too. This filbert brush is a, a nylon or a synthetic um, bristles that are really good for these final stages. And we'll go down here to. Uh, this part of her hair here and just uh, bunch up those little uh, parts of that were catching some some light there. Okay, I think that's about all I'm going to um, to do for right now if you would back up and uh, and uh, I'll just finish up here. Okay, so um, the painting is uh, near completion. I'm still going to be softening some edges and um, and working on some other areas of uh, uh, her, her legs. And I've just done a, some painting on those today, but I'm going to soften those edges. But basically, it's um, uh, very near completion, I'd say about 98%. And uh, it's pretty well where I wanted it to be. It, um, as I said in the earlier uh, stages, it, it's a tonalist kind of painting uh, inspired by the work of uh, Rembrandt. It has a, a 
some of those warm kind of amber tones that Rembrandt and Velasquez uh, used, and I admire their work greatly. So uh, uh, inspired by their work, and it has that kind of tonality. With this one, the other one had a cooling tone. Okay, but uh, that's basically what I wanted to demonstrate today. I, before we do close, I wanted to show you um, a couple of the uh, studies that I work on intermittently. This is a Al Prima painting of uh, Keuka Lake near Hammondsport. And so I work on that uh, in between while I'm working on, uh, on the uh, new that is on the easel. And this is another Al Prima painting that uh, I kind of go to work on this. This is a painting also, it was done from the back of my truck near uh, Watkins Glen, New York, uh, near closer to Hector. Okay, so um, thanks so much for your attention, and uh, that completes the video. Thank you.